Namaste. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you had a good restful night's sleep. Today's practice, we're going to focus on the air element. So come on up. We're going to start standing. Finding yourself in your Tadasana. It's really as if we we're going to start in our standing Shavasana. Okay, we want to be as relaxed as we can for a moment while standing. So bring your awareness, look down at your feet, make sure that they're um, the big, the second and third toe are facing forward, the heels are behind. Make sure your pelvic basket is even, not too far forward, not too far back, just nice and even, balanced over your leg. Shoulders rolled front and back a couple times and balanced over your pelvic basket. Good. And then make sure your chin isn't jetting forward or pulling back. Relax your neck. So finding this standing position with a lot of ease. Stiram Sukham Asana. Strength and ease in the pose. So letting your eyes close for a moment if it's okay for your balance. If not, just hold a wall or look, look out in front. Soft gaze. Taking a few gentle breaths, just noticing where the breath goes in the body. Belly, chest, front, back, side. Notice where the breath is going. Breathing in, pran. Breathing in, vayu, air. As you exhale down, root down through the floor that you're on into Mother Earth. And on your next inhale, bring the hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. With gratitude, we salute all the great yoga masters, past and present. A special prayer of thanksgiving for Baba Haridas. With joy, we recognize the excellent wisdom teachings of yoga. Ayurveda, and with vigor we dedicate ourselves to self-transforming practice. So what do you need this morning for self-transformation? Usually the first thing that pops in your mind, form it into a positive sentence as if it had already happened, and use this as a sankalpa, a solemn vow, repeating it to yourself three times. And then to what or to whom can you offer your practice this morning? Find the name of what you're thinking of and state it three times to yourself. And on your next inhale breath, root down, exhale, root down, Rooting on inhaling and exhaling. Two more breaths. Root down. Really feel it. Down through the feet, the legs, the trunk. And from the belly button up, rise up. Use the breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Join me if you can for one big ohm. <laughs> exhaling the breath all the way out. And inhaling to chant. Oh. And on your next inhale, letting your eyes flutter open, release your arms down to the sides for a minute. Just shake out your arms. So today we're talking about the air element. And the first thing I want to do is place the function. Shake a leg, shaking your arms and shake a leg. We're going to talk about the function of air in the body for just a moment. How the values, how the air element is separated into sub air elements. Okay. So to do that, we have like a little Y M C A sort of uh, thing we're going to do together. All right. So we're going to think about the values coming into the body. We're going to start at the very top. 
okay? The very top. So up, Udana, upward flowing, everything that's coming out of the body. So do this with me, up, up, flowing out and up. So speech, singing, burping, belching, vomiting, everything up and out of the body, okay? Prana, in and down. Do that with me, in and down. Put one hand on top and then the other. In and down. So think of inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Your exhaling is going out with Udana. Out, out, out. In and down. So that is breathing. This is spitting, vomiting, singing, talking, belching, all of the things that happen, okay? In and down. And then here, our digestive fire. So make a big inner circle, everything folding in on top of itself. Samana Vayu. All of the transformation of our nutrients, of our emotions, of our thoughts. Samana Vayu. Right here in the belly button, radiating, coming back in. Good. And then spread your legs apart and make an A, A frame. Apana, Apana. The downward flow, responsible for everything, childbirth, menstruation, evacuation, ejaculation, everything going down and out of the body, okay? And finally, yawn body. So nice, big circulation, yawn body. Bend your knees if you go to one side, keep yourself safe, knee tracking over your foot, good. So circulation, blood, lymph, walk your legs in, continue to circulate, walk your legs in, good. And now stand in your Shavasana for a moment. Soft gaze or eyes gently closed. And review those in your mind. Udana, upward reaching. Prana, in and down. Breath and brain. Samana, unchanging air, folding in on itself, digestion of thoughts, emotions, assimilation. Apana, downward flow. And Vyan, Vyan, circulation, blood, lymph, all of the things that move in the body, gas exchange, everything moving and circulating. Good. And then open your eyes, inhale. And the very first thing we're gonna do is root down through our right side. So root down through your right side completely. Don't let your right hip go out. So keep the hip nice and stable and externally rotate your left leg, plant it. We're just playing with these values for a moment, playing with them. So downward reaching, we have the plant here. We're gonna lean over, but don't let that hip come out. Keep hugging it in leaning over and take your arms out, sort of like a scarecrow, okay? Palms are facing the floor, palms are facing the floor. And then with your left hand, push away over to the right, push away over to the right. And your right arm, drape it across your head, just drape it across your head. Root down, pull in your belly, lift your pelvic floor and breathe into the chest. You can join your index finger with your thumb for Gyan Mudra, the Mudra of Wisdom. Good, and then we're gonna slowly come back up and release. Release the left leg, good. Shift the way over to the left side. So really don't let the left hip go. That's really engaged, hip is engaged, everything is engaged. Good, and then we're gonna externally rotate the right leg. Plant it, plant it close, but it's on the floor. And again, as we lean, we're not pushing into the hip. The hip is staying in and integrated. We're leaning, good. And then out with the arms like a scarecrow. Think Wizard of Oz for a moment. The best yoga film ever. Try to watch it again with your yoga cap on. Okay, right arm, push away. Go ahead and put the mudra on if you'd like, Yanni. Index finger and thumb touching. 
and then drape your left arm over your head. Looking forward, feeling the whole body curve as you lift the pelvic floor, pull in the belly, breathe into the chest. Finding all of the vital airs of the body, our pranic energy of the body. Good, and on your next exhale, let's come up. Just let the arms float down, release the leg. Good, and again, hug in the hips, lift the pelvic floor, pull in the belly. Good, and then we're gonna take the legs apart. Great, so just wiggling the legs for a minute, but lift the pelvic floor if you let it go when you take the legs apart. Good, and I want us to get really familiar with these hip creases. Okay, so go ahead and put your uh, the outside of your hands in those hip creases. And when you come forward, feel that's where the action comes from. Take the whole trunk with it and exhale back up. Okay, let's let's use our inhale for for static. Okay, so to inhale while you're up. Exhale parallel to the floor as much as you can. Inhale while you're there, and exhale back up. Inhale, stay static. Exhale, move. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, back up. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, head it over, hinging at the hip. Poke your tailbone back behind you. And exhale up. Good, okay? We're gonna externally rotate the left leg. Stay upright. So if that took you any leaning over to the left, self-correct. Pull in the pelvic floor, pull in the belly. Good, and we're gonna bend our left knee and stack it over the foot. Good, and then look down at your leg and see if you can see your big toe, your big toe knuckle, a little bit of your big toe, nothing else. Everything else needs to be hidden by your leg. And again, if you lean forward and do that, bring yourself back. Check in with your right heel. Do you need to take it out a little bit more, give you a little bit more stability in that leg? Good. And then we are gonna lean for a moment. So your, your leg is bent and we are gonna lean over until we get a long line of energy from your right heel to the crown of your head. So go ahead and put your left hand on the crown of your head and then push from your right foot into the crown of the head. Bring the belly in, torso is toward me. Good. And then slowly begin to straighten your left leg. Don't lock out the knee, keep it open. Taking your right arm parallel to the floor, right arm parallel to the floor. Then drop the right arm back behind you. Just see if you can make any kind of relationship with your left leg. Good, not collapsing. Take an inhale and let's exhale all the way up. Good, release the arms, bend the knee a little to unrotate. And now we're gonna rotate other leg. Great, okay. Bend the knee and again, stack it. Make sure that you can see your big toe. You cannot see any of your heel, none of your heel whatsoever. And check in with your left leg. You need to kick your heel out a little bit, giving you more stability in the whole groin of the left leg. Right, good. Okay, and now we're gonna lean. If you've leaned yet, yeah, don't lean. Come up so you can feel it. Pelvic floor lifted, belly is in, and lean. Good. And go ahead and take your right arm, put it at the top of your head, crown of your head. Push into your left foot and lift all the way through the spine. Belly in, everything in. Good. I have fireworks in the background, someone's birthday. Great, and now we're gonna straighten the leg. Good. Release the arm, just release that arm. And left arm parallel to the floor and then take it back and see if you can have any kind of relationship with your right leg, just see. Good, belly is in, torso is in, everything is in, body is aligned as if you were squeezed between two panes of glass. Good. And then exhale up. 
bend the knee slightly and unrotate. Good. Come back. Good. And standing in Tadasana, close your eyes or a soft gaze. Standing Shavasana. Stiram Sukhamasanam. Strength and ease in the pose. Find the ease. Relax your belly. Relax your jaw. Check in for any tension in the body. Let go for just a bit. Good. And then inhale and letting your eyes open. Okay. Because today is um, <clears throat> air day, I want to go a little bit into sun salutation, which has lots of air and movement. For us to remember, the first element that we went over was earth. Grounding, rooting, stabilizing. So making sure that whatever's on the floor is the most rooted and grounded. Okay. And then as we come up the body, we're beginning to feel the water element in the trunk, and keeping that balanced and even. Fire element in the chest region. So we're feeling all five elements in the body all the time. All of them are mixing. They don't have only one place. It's all over the body. They have a place for meditation, a place for function. But as we move into the sun salute, I want us to be very aware of rooting down first, okay? So, so that I can take my arms out to the side, you're not going to get my legs, my lower legs and my feet, but that's all right. You know what they look like. Okay? Good. So if you can face me, great. And if you're on the side, that's also fine. All right? Bring in hands into the heart, Anjali. Root down. Think about your belly button. Think of that being your center of gravity. Belly is in. Breathing is in the chest. This part of the chest, not high in the chest, right here, okay? Take a nice exhale, ground down, and as you inhale, arms floating up. And exhale down, just arms first, arms floating up. And exhale down, arms floating up. And exhale down. Next time we're going over, inhaling up, and exhaling forward. Inhale up, look forward more than down. Exhale, fold. Inhale up and exhale, fold. And inhale up and exhale, fold. Stay there. Bend your knees enough to put your hands on the floor and step your left leg back into a lunge. Good. Drop into your knee and then sweep your arms forward and up, rising as we root. So rooted down, all the way rooted down. Good, float the arms back down. Come off the back knee and take your right leg back to meet the left into plank pose, long line of energy. Drop to your knees and then you make your decision here. How are you gonna get back? So you are in plank, how are you gonna get down? You could always come to your forearms and lower yourself like that. You decide. Coming down. And once you're down, inhaling into cobra. Pull in the belly. And now curl the toes under. If you're not inverting, come back up to plank. If you're inverting, mountain pose, often called downward facing dog. If you're not inverting, come into plank. So eye pressure problems, glaucoma, first few days of menstrual cycle, plank. Otherwise, mountain. And now we're going to step our left foot forward. Good. Drop to the back knee. And again, arms sweeping. Float the arms down. Come off the back knee, inhale, a little hop to the front, long spine, exhale, fold. And inhale, arms to the sides, coming up, all the way up. And exhale, hands into Anjali. Second side, inhale, arms floating up. 
Exhale, diving forward. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, right leg back into a lunge. Drop to the knee. And sweep your arms forward and up. Float the arms down. Come off the back knee and take the left leg back to meet the right. Plank pose. Drop to your knee, so you can always lower in Chaturanga, or onto your forearms, or six or eight parts bound, and baby cobra. All toenails in the floor, especially the little side, the pinky toenails. And make sure you can take your hands off the floor. Just using what your, your upper back, your thoracic spine provides. Now, curl the toes under, press into mountain, or plank if you're not inverting. Inhale, look at the space between the hands. Right foot over by the right hand, drop to the left knee, sweeping the arms up slowly. Loading the arms down, rooting to rise. Off the back knee, inhale, a little hop to the front, long spine. Exhale, if you're inverting, fold, otherwise stay looking forward. And inhale, arms to the side, coming up, all the way up, gazing up. Exhale, hands into the heart. Good, so that was one. Relax yourself slowly. Just bring yourself into the body. Standing show awesome. Notice the feet, the arches on the feet. Your legs, your calves, the whole of the pelvic basket. Bringing your awareness again into the upward flow of energy, Udana. Prana, coming in, riding the breath down and into the brain. Samana, transformation, assimilation, absorption, nutrients, emotions, thoughts. Apana, downward flow, rooting, grounding, stabilizing. And beyond, circulation of blood, of limbs, of everything in the body. All of the movement. The only element with movement. Air. And then on your next inhale, letting your eyes flutter open. Good. So one more sun salute. And this time as we do it, I want us to really think about um, all five values in the body. What's rooting as we rise up, what the difference is. So bring your awareness into your belly button. Just feel your belly for a second. Good. Lift the pelvic floor. Belly is in. And now feel your breath in your chest. So putting your arms, your hands around your rib cage. Exhale and then inhale into your hands. See how the belly stays stable as you inhale into your hands. So this is the breath we want to use for this sun salute. Okay? Good. Inhaling, hands into the heart. Exhale, arms floating down. Inhale, arms reaching up. Exhale, beginning our dive forward, inverting or not. You decide. Inhale, gazing forward. Exhale, left leg back into a lunge. Drop to the knee. Sweep the arms up or put your arms and hands on your right knee. You decide. Rooting, rise. Float the arms down. Come off the back knee. Press to plank. Long line of energy, crown of the head, pull in the belly, reach through the heels. The heels are super important for distributing the body weight. 
Follow the foot. Come to the knees. And slowly, in any way you'd like, journeying down to the floor. And inhale. And to come. Curl the toes under and press into mountain. Inhale, gazing forward at the space between your hands, left foot over by the left hand. Drop to the knee. Root, rise. On your next exhale, float the arms down. Come off the back knee, press into the ball of the foot and the heel. Inhale, a little hop to the front, long spine. Exhale, fold. And inhale, arms to the sides, coming up, all the way up. And exhale, hands into arms. Second side. Inhale, arms floating up. Exhale, beginning our swan dive. Looking forward or releasing the head, crown of the head to the floor. Inhale, everybody looks. Exhale, hands to the floor and right leg back into a lunge. Drop to the knee or stay up, either way. And root and rise. Exhale, arms floating down. Come off the back, come off the back knee. Stepping your left foot back to meet the right. Long line of energy. Plank pose. Good. Drop to the knees. Make your way slowly down to the floor. And inhale. Oh. Good. Exhale. Mountain. Be in mountain for a moment. Be aware of all five vital energies moving through the body. And on your next inhale, looking at the space between your hands, stepping your right foot over by your right hand, drop to the left knee, root and rise. Float the arms down nice and slowly. Come off of the back knee. Inhale, a little hop to the front, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms to the sides, coming up. All the way up, gaze up. And exhale, hands into the front. Release your arms, find your standing Shavasana. Just breathe. Soft belly, soft pelvic floor, soft shoulders, soft sternum, soft jaw, everything. We'll re-engage in a moment. Take this little respite of muscular relaxation. And on your next inhale, letting your eyes flutter open. So we're just going to do a little bit more with wide-legged stance. If you've got a block, grab it. Nice wide-legged stance. And just, I hope you don't have a heavy cork block. And this is a really soft foam block. If you do, you might want to modify what I'm saying, okay? Because I just want you to hold the block over in your left hand at shoulder height. Okay, good. Take a nice inhale, and as you exhale, head forward. Good, inhale, pause. Exhale, take that block right in front of your right toe. Good, and inhale, back to center. Exhale in front of your left toe. And inhale, back to center. Inhale. There's a little twist going on. Your right shoulder is coming up to allow that to happen. Come back to center. And your left shoulder is going to open out, right shoulder down, and back to center. 
Great. Come up. Hold the block out in the right hand. Take an inhale. Exhale, belly and spine are engaged. Coming over, parallel to the floor. Good. And put the block in front. So this is in your thoracic spine. And to the center and over to the right. And to the center. And block to the left. And the center. And block to the right. So hips didn't move, nothing moved. Block right in the center and press it to both arms and hands. Get really long, look down at the floor. Make sure your heels are out enough that you feel supported. Lift your toes, gazing at the floor. Long line of energy. Spread your sit bones. Roll into the outside of the foot and the inside of the foot. And outside of the foot and the inside. Lift the toes, keep the toes lifted. Keep spreading the sit bones. And now leaving just your left hand on the, on the block. Let your right arm dangle like a pendulum. Just dangle it side to side. And then up and down. So just slowly letting it come up. Keep your hips even, feet even. Everything's even. You are totally rooted, and the only thing that's moving is your thoracic spine, where you have ribs. Good. And then let the pendulum stay. Come back to neutral. Switch hands. So a few times, just swing it like a pendulum. Press into your feet. Lift your toes. It'll give you more, more groundedness. And then swing up. Keep your hips even. One more. And let it just swing. We're going to be returning down. Good. Press into the block. And you're going to heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. Maybe even a little bit more. You decide. We're coming down into a squat. Good. Really into a squat. My favorite pose in the whole world. <laughs> to really balance that rooting down that apana vayu. You can bring your elbows inside and knees resisting against elbows, elbows resisting against knees. Let your pelvic floor relax for a moment. Belly soft. And a little tiny twist over to the left. Just opening your arms wide. Keep your head as an extension of your spine. Don't drop your head. Bring your arms back to neutral. And then opening to the right. And bring your arms back into neutral. Good. One more time to the left. Nice, big, open. If you like to bind, this is the place to wrap your arms around your right leg. Or otherwise, just open and big and beautiful. Neck is an extension of your spine. Don't let it go. Back to neutral. And to the right. Final twist. Bind if you'd like. And slowly back into neutral. Help yourself to sit down. Take it easy. Find your seat. Good. And extend your legs out for a moment in Dandasana. So thinking about the body being at this right angle, take the arms up overhead. Squeeze the upper arm, the arm, the upper arm, which now seems like it's lower since the other one is more up. But squeeze the upper arm close to the ears. Swallow your neck for a moment, and then roll the shoulder blades down, getting a lot of space between your ears and your shoulders. 
Heels are definitely on the floor. Bend your knees a little if you like. Keep those heels firmly planted. Pull in your belly. Feel the pelvic floor lift. Notice the diamond created. Sit bone, sit bone, pubic bone, tailbone. Let that be your rooting focus. Active Dandasan. Urdhva Dandasan. Upward reaching staff pose. One more breath. And as you exhale, bring the hands into the heart. Good. And then relax your legs completely. Let them go for a moment. Reach into your quads. Give them a little bit of a massage. Just a little bit. Dig into that middle one. Intermediate is hiding up there under the rectus femoris. Okay. And I know I said last twist, but I lied. Okay. So bringing in your left heel to the groin in external rotation. Take your right leg back into internal rotation. You may be on both sit bones, and if you're not, just grab your block and put it underneath your left only sit bone, leaving your right sit bone hanging in space. A little bitty twist over to the left. Coming back to the center, and a little bitty twist over to the right. Coming back to the center. Good. Relax into the legs. Let the groin balance here. Internal rotation on the right, external rotation on the left. And then if you use the block, come off of it, and down, and switch your legs over to the other side. But take the time to place them properly. Heel, right heel into the groin, left leg back behind you. And if you're not on both sit bones, take a block, push in a pillow, a blanket, put it right underneath the right sit bone only. Left sit bone is hanging in space. Good. Little bitty tiny twist over to the right. Exhale, back to the center. Move on your inhale. Resist against the breath. Inhale to the left. And exhale, back to the center. Inhale to the right. Exhale, back to center. Inhale to the left. This is the last one. And exhale, back to center. Good. Coming off your block. And now we're headed to the floor. So just for you to be aware, we're going to take an inversion. Okay? It's going to be our last pose. You can see if you need to add anything or not before it. But before we do that, just want to show you, if you're not inverting, you still might want to invert a little by just getting close enough to a wall and placing your feet on the wall. That's going to give you a little bit of an inversion that will bring the lymph, blood, everything back down into the trunk of the body where it needs to go to be processed, OK? If you are inverting, then just lift the hips Place them on the block and either put your feet on a wall and relax like that or draw the legs up and relax like that. Either way, the legs are relaxed. Okay, so no big like a dead frog into your legs. Don't look at me when you get down. So it's going down into your inversion. I am not doing it. So no need even bothering to look. We're going to be there for two minutes. My job is to keep the time. Find your breath. Are you breathing? Where are you breathing? Don't change it, just notice it. Let the breath caress your body. Find three body, breath, mind. The three things working in tundra. The three energies, body, breath, mind. Now 
One minute, one more. Twenty more seconds. And as you prepare to come out of your inversion, I want you to melt into your Shavasana with as little movement as possible. Just melt, come off your block, come down from your inversion and find yourself melting onto the floor, just letting go. Don't be trapped by your mat. You can have your arms or your legs off your mat. Just feeling complete relaxation. Babaji says this is the hardest of all the poses. Just letting go. Check in with your jaw. Hanuman. Broken jaw. A broken ego. Just letting go. Slowly and gently bringing your awareness back to the breath. The rise and fall of your belly or your chest. Letting the eyes roll in the socket in one direction, then the other. The tongue roaming the mouth, back of the teeth, roof of the mouth, swishing it along the front of the teeth. 
Then opening the mouth wide as if you were yawning, noticing the snap, crackle, pop of the ears, wriggle your nose, bringing the senses online, twinkle your toes, swim your fingers, all of the senses coming back online. Slowly and gently deciding how you want to get there, you're going to make your way over to one side in embryo pose, curled up, safe and secure. You can stretch or shrink however you'd like, all curled up in embryo pose. And then slowly, gently, begin to press the floor away, letting your head be the very last thing that comes up. Press it away and find your comfortable seat. Good. Just being still for a moment, upright spine, letting everything integrate. all of the asana, down to the shavasana, garabdasana, embryo. Pranayama, breath control. Because today's focus is on the air element, I want us to focus on the air itself coming into the body and going out of the body. I want us to focus on feeling the air coming in cooler, feeling the air going out warmer. Just noticing the quality of the air. If you know a full yogic breath, I would love for you to do that as we experiment here. For those of you who don't know a full yogic breath, I'll try a very brief instruction. You exhale the breath all the way out. Use your belly muscles, bring the breath all the way out and then relax your belly. So the breath starts by the diaphragm dropping and then draw that same inhale up into your chest, expanding the chest. Once the chest is expanded fully, slight pause, and then letting all of the air come out as the lungs recoil. The very last movement is belly to spine. Again, relax the belly. And then draw that inhale up into the chest, spreading side to side, front to back. And exhale. So just bringing yourself into this full yoga breath, noticing the quality of the air element moving into your body and out of your body. little tug of the belly at the bottom, a relaxing of the belly, and then drawing of that same inhale up into the chest. One smooth inhalation in two parts, or two places. It's one smooth inhalation, one smooth exhalation, letting gravity and nature take its course as the lungs recoil, the muscles relax, a little tongue to the belly, and
taking time to complete the round that you're on with a full exhalation. And then letting the breath soften, relax, no control. Just breathing your natural, natural breath. Your belly, your chest, doesn't matter. Just let the universe breathe you. So we're going to move now into our meditation period, and I would like for you to listen for a moment. As I've mentioned, this comes from the Patva Shuddha meditation, this description of where we find air in our subtle body. So not it's placed all over our body as are all five elements. When we're doing our focus, this is where we're going to focus. Okay? So we're going to imagine a hexagon, a six-sided hexagon from the sternum, or from the, bring yourself up the sternum to the point of your throat, the very dimple of your throat. And so from there to the top of the shoulders, top of the shoulders to the ears, from the ears to the bridge of the nose. I'll draw it again, this hexagon. Bridge of the nose to the bottom of the ears, ears to the shoulders, shoulders to the Jugular notch or the dimple of the throat. Okay, so this area has a smoky gray hexagon. And if you could imagine the hexagon just turning. So it's the whole of the back body, whole of the front body, a hexagon that is rotating around your spine. Okay, the mudra for the air element tuck your index finger into the root of the thumb and then curl your thumb around the index finger. So root of the thumb touched by the tip of the index finger and then thumb curling around the index finger. Other three are extended and resting on the thighs. Back of the hands onto the thighs. Good. So now we're ready for the bija mantra. Yum, yum, yum. So holding the mudra, keeping yourself tethered with the mantra. Bringing your eyes gently to a gaze out in front or closing them completely. Yum, yum. Yum. Air element in the body, moving blood, lymph, moving our food down the body, our blinking, our belching, all of our things that happen with movement, air element. Outside of the body, wind, hurricane. Air moving water, air moving earth, air moving fire, air movement, inside and out. We are a microcosm of the macrocosm. Air, by you. Young, 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 young. Young, 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 
Smoky blue hexagon, the next one. Qualities of air. Silently repeating. Yum. 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 Slowly releasing the mudra, the mantra, untethering, letting go. Letting the whole of the meditation drift as you bring your hands into the heart. Untethering. Taking just a moment to remember your sankalpa, repeating it three times. Remembering your intent, your uh, offering to whom you dedicated or to what you dedicated your practice. Any merit we may have earned in our practice this morning, we lift it up to the welfare of all sentient beings. Taking these thoughts and letting them come out of your mind into your heart, symbolically out of your heart into the very palms of your hands and then lift them up and let them go off into the universe. Bringing the hands back into the heart. Hari Om Tat Sat. Okay, I'm coming to you, and 
I'll fix it where you can speak. I'll be right there. Okay. Let's see. First, let me cancel spotlight, get gallery view. Um, allow participants to unmute themselves. And we should be there. <laughs> it should be possible for you to talk or express or say anything that you might want to talk about this morning. How was the practice for you? How was air? How was that for you? It was very good. Oh. Yes, Sylvia, go, please, please. Um, I, I love that we start with, with all of them, like kind of moving. And I think that allowed me also to center more into air when we got there, uh -huh. when we focus on air. Uh -huh. So I really appreciate going through all of them with the movement, with the words. Oh, the values, going through all of the values. values. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. good. Yeah, the subdoshas of vata are the values or the functions of, of the air element. In some scriptures, there are 10, and they divide out blinking and um, burping and really small little things, and it's all in the head region. But uh, usually it's the big five that we all talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody yeah, else? It was Anybody beautiful. Else? Yes. It was beautiful. And, uh, you know, that explanations of all the values were really very good. And it, you can assimilate that easily. Good. I'm glad. Thank, Thank you. you Monica. You're very welcome. Very, very welcome. You know, we don't often think about how the movement in the body, uh, how it is, r really, like how, how we function. And of course, the rishis, the sages from, from the past, really looked at how we function in the body. What's responsible for each? How do you feel it? There's one vayu, and there are five sub values or divisions, and yet they're all, all over everywhere. Just like there's one fire element and fire is in every single cell of our body every single cell has a fire right fire element that mitochondria we might call it now in modern day biology but we all have fire in everything although it may be focused into our solar plexus kind of the center of our fire area yeah uh, so this is the book for those of you who haven't seen it this is the tatva shudhi um, in case you want to write it down or put it anywhere, right? So this is the book. It's from the Bihar School of Yoga, which Babaji liked. And um, yeah, and here's their drawing of the, of the five elements on the body. So you can see barely, let's see if I can get it anywhere closer. You can barely see that there's a little hexagon there. But as I said, it's the hexagon forms here from the jugular notch to the shoulder, to the ears, to the bridge of the nose. So just making that and remembering it's our whole body. It's not like flat, like a plate. We're three dimensional um, and it's everyone. Who is that from Salt Spring? I am missing a face, hi. <laughs> Nice to have you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so any, any questions about the, the asanas that we did? Everybody okay backwise and everybody okay getting to the floor? Everybody okay with all of it? Good, good. And hopefully over this period of time, what we're really learning is how to take care of ourselves, how to get to our maximum uh, extension in, in a place and stop there and just play that edge short of it, right? And not, not really think about um, 
what is it supposed to look like in somebody else? What does it look like in me? You know, how is my body comfortable with this? Do I need a chair? Do I need a block? Do I, what do I need to make this my practice? So really concentrating on what you need all through life, concentrating on what you need. Oh, on that note, I just wanted to, to mention, um, I used to try to go through life, like just power through. Uh, and I am noticing since the yoga training and everything, just like a little self care is amazing. And I had been doing, um, I'm forgetting the name, the neti pot. To Halaneti. Halaneti. And I did last time just suggested to put a little bit of oil and it made such a difference the next day, the next day doing... Um, Jalaneti. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, the alternate nostril breathing in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, like all of us who do Jalaneti, like after a while, it may be too much, especially if you're very pitch, it can be very drying using the salt, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I really like nausea, using oil in my nose a lot more. Um, at night and I use it every morning yeah is there an oil that is used for the for the ears occasionally or yeah it's called the process is called karna purna means filling the ear <laughs> and you fill the ear with oil and leave it in and then you know you let it come out and I use that on my elbows <laughs> and then I put a cotton ball in and, and sleep with it uh, as much as can be in my ear there sesame oil plain sesame oil or um, Brahmi, Brahmi, which is a mind herb, is really good for putting in your ears. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I love Karna Purna. I love that, it makes me feel so taken care of. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Danger, what is the oil you put in your nose? What is the name of it? Uh, that, that I use personally, it's called Anu Taila, A-N-U. Uh, and the word Thaila means oil in Hindi and Sanskrit. So but do you think here in the States that would be readily available? At yeah, you can store? order it on Amazon, Anu Thaila. Okay. Or the best, the best quality is Banyan Botanicals. Just BanyanBotanicals.com. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. B-A-N-Y-A-N. Right, like the Banyan tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also okay. sesame, Thanks. had you said last time? Yes, yeah, sesame. Plain sesame is, is really good. The Anutaila is really strong, Gene. And so I recommend also getting sesame oil and halving it, maybe even quartering it. Um, okay. Because it's like, woo! <laughs> so the sesame oil that, that we would use, would it also be the same type you would use for cooking or is it completely an ingestible sesame oil? Well, I guess uh, all sesame oil should be. Adjusted. You want to use something that's, if you want to spend a lot more money on your cooking oil, you could do that. But you want for whatever you're putting in your body, always organic and cold pressed. Cold pressed is key. Okay. So nothing okay. that's been heated, right? Almost all olive oils are heated. You can find Bertoli is a olive oil that is not. If you put it in the fridge and it doesn't firm up like ghee, it is not pure cold pressed olive oil. So look at your olive oil, stick it in the fridge. If in the morning it's still liquid, throw it away, not throw it away. Use it, cook with it, but don't ever use it on your body. I yeah, around here we use, we use the Greek olive oil because we have a lot of Greek people living here and they make their olive oil. So it's fabulous. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And it does I not, found it does great not olive oil in Sonoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. So be, be sure, uh, make sure it's cold pressed and organic. Right, Yeah. right. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, so nice spending time with you as always. Really great to see you, Cam and Nayana, Rosita, <laughs> and Jean Ashok, nice to have you. Ramin, I know you're there. Uh, Alfredo, I know you're there. Wendy, nice to have you. Mary, lovely to see you this morning. All right, so everyone, Tina, nice to have you. You're at the very top right next to me. I almost missed you. <laughs> it's so nice to see everyone this morning. Have a wonderful Thursday and wonderful weekend. And good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I'll see you on Tuesday and we'll do ether space element, our last of the five. Okay, everybody have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs>